Woohoo! Welcome to Unexplained Reality, the podcast about the strange and unexplained but real. We like to hear about and talk about Bigfoot and the Sasquatch. We call them boogers. We also like to talk about dogmen, UFOs, aliens, ghostesses, and pretty much anything that is strange, weird, and unexplained. We'd love to hear from you and if you've done or had an experience or an encounter. You can get us on the email at unexplained.reality at yahoo.com. We got the Facebook, the Instagram, the Twitter. Heck, we even got one of them YouTube channels. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got the uh, PayPal and we got the Patreon. Woo, come and get you some. Welcome to Unexplained Reality. I am uh, Brian Quinn, and with me is... Dun, 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 dun. You were a little too early. Yeah, little I understand that. Quick. A little too fast. You did your dun dun dun, dun. I was uh, right in the middle of it. I don't know. Let's do it again. Dun dun, okay. dun dun Harrison Quinn. There you go. That's better. All right, so I hope everybody's had a, a good week and um, is ready for... Another fantastic episode of Unexplained Reality. Um, what you been up to, buddy? You got back from the beach? Uh, yeah, got back from the beach. Um, yeah, just chilling. So did you have a good time at the beach? Of course. Some, some cool stuff, riding the wave runners, and swimming mm-hmm. in the pool. Did you do any fishing? I didn't see any pictures of fishing. Yeah, we we did a little bit of fishing, but we were at the very end of the channel instead of out on the the end of it. It like went in the there was a channel and then it like went into a divvy uh, where all our like because we had a gated community it went inwards, and there were all the houses and then we were way farther along and took a left turn so we were kind of at the end of it. Um, so we were in a real far branch off of the channel, so it wasn't very good fishing. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, at least you got to do a little bit, and you weren't at school, so. Yeah, sure. It was hot down there, though, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a hot Guess. week here last week. Very hot. Yeah, caught some sun while I was down there. Yeah, at least you had an ocean breeze and stuff, because uh, here it was just very, very, very stagnant, very hot. Yeah. I think we were, uh, heat indexes in, like, 105, 103, 105 every day, so. Dang and uh, you guys might, we apologize, you might hear some um, background noise. Uh, we got, for some reason, every time we record, our where we record at is uh, real close to some windows. And our neighborhood is very quiet, but as soon as we go to record, it seems like kids are always out in front of the house hooping and hollering. And so you might hear some of that. It's not us. So... Um, as usual, you can uh, contact us. We've had a few comments late, lately. Uh, would like to get some more. Um, so, you know, feel free to reach out to us, unexplained.reality at yahoo.com. Um, you can hit us up. We're on Facebook. I, I worked and set up a group. So um, I'm going to be transitioning from the page to the group. I really like the group thing a lot better. Um, unfortunately, I had to come send a request to join or whatever, but that's no problem. Just, you know. Send that, but um, in the show notes there'll be a link to that, and you can just go to Facebook and and uh, you know hit us up there. Um, buddy, you got some background background noise happening there. Do I? Yeah, there's a lot of knocking around. Okay, sorry. Here, let me fix it. All right, right that should be good. Okay. Um, so hit us up on uh, you know Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know, we're on all that, so you can just look us up. You'll find us very easily, or you can, 
I'll put them in the show notes, and you guys, if you look at the description for this, you know, for the episode, all that information is in there, including our YouTube and our Patreon, and we set up a PayPal account, so if anybody, you know, we're not, yeah, beating anybody over the head, we're just, you know, we have expenses every month, and uh, if anybody feels like they want to donate, that's fine. If you don't, we're going to keep going anyway, so, uh, um, I think that that's all I've got. We can uh, roll into. I've got a few news stories. So you got anything, buddy? Want to talk about? Mm, first? I don't think so. No. You can go ahead. Okay. I, I do have a story, but I'm gonna save it until after you do your first one. Okay. Um. This first article, I guess you would say, or news is from Cryptozoology News. Um. Dot com. And uh, it talks about the features of advanced aliens and what they might look like. It says, uh, this was posted on July 24th. It says, if you ever thought about the existence of advanced extraterrestrial life, you probably have wondered what these beings might actually look like. In this article, we will discuss a variety of alien characteristics that are depicted in science fiction by those who claim to have had face-to-face encounters and also from the latest speculations by reputable scientists. Um, the Blob is uh, it's an American science fiction horror film that was released on September 12, 1958 the alien entity was a red belly like Blob a red jelly like Blob I can't read which became redder and also grew in size each time it would consume something the creature eventually grew larger than a building Alien um, which came out in May 25th, 1979. I can't believe that movie was that old. Um, the science fiction horror film Alien was released. The alien creature is unlike many other extraterrestrials that have been portrayed in science fiction films. The alien from the 1979 film was a predatory monster-like being that, uh, with great physical strength. It had an elongated skull, no visible eyes, and a segmented tail. Um, with a small sharp tip like a scorpion as the alien film series evolved the design of the extraterrestrial was modified i believe that alien also had like an inner mouth didn't it that came out yeah the, the, it it had like a second tongue and it would use that to yeah eat people's brains i guess technically it would shoot through their head but yeah. if you if you if you know like not anything but if you if you know a bit about the alien series those weren't the intelligent ones there were the the predators too from that series oh, okay. and the predators were the more intelligent ones that had ships and you know they were more adapted but um they were what actually civilized aliens yeah yeah they were more civilized aliens i mean they're still aliens and they were still savages but they they were smart they were intelligent right. and there was the dirty work yeah, they were actually a uh, another species of alien. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember what they were called. They were aliens, but they weren't like super aliens. Um, but they actually made the xenomorph aliens, the ones with the long skulls and the tails and the the black ones. That the 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 whole kind of uh, franchise is about. Um, but they kind of they like lived on an alien planet and they end up like genetically modifying like a bunch of different animals to end up with that and they use those as like their their dirty work the guard dog type thing oh uh, yeah yeah and actually they just came out with the new alien movie which if you haven't seen it, it is a really good movie i suggest you go watch it i haven't seen that i think i've only seen parts of the actual original one but it's kind of sad but i haven't seen that um, yeah. Mars Attacks is the next one. Is an American comic set, uh, science fiction film released on December 13, 1996. Um, the aliens in this film were beings who came from the planet Mars and invaded Earth. They were composed of green slime and had large eyes with an oversized head that was unproportional to their bodies. The head size of aliens were evidently composed of brain tissue. Um, characteristics described in alleged alien encounters for decades. Um, there have been many claims from those who say they have been face-to-face with beings who come from another planet. Of course, most will quickly dismiss their reports and even consider the claimer to be crazy. Whether they are kooks with made-up stories for the purpose of gaining fame or people who truly believe 
that what they saw were actual extraterrestrials. They all described the features of the beings they saw. Um, they say they've encountered. Um, those are uh, these are some uh, descriptions of what people have claimed to see. Um, the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter in 1955. There were, was a well-known um, Kelly Hopkinsville encounter, also known as Hopkins, Hopkinsville Goblin case. Yeah, I've um, actually heard about this. Yeah, I have too. I just I didn't know the specifics about it. Um, Kelly Green Men case is another term or another way it's referred to. Um, a Kentucky family with five adults and seven children claimed to have had a close encounter with aliens who attacked their farmhouse. They described the creatures as short, around two feet to four feet tall, and dark goblin-like figures. Um, the aliens had skinny legs, large pointed ears, claw-like hands, and glowing yellow eyes. Um, that's, yeah, that'd be pretty. That freaked me out. Um, the Barney and Betty Hill story, um, and Barney and Betty Hill, uh, well, this is it right here, um, in case you don't know this story, but Barney and Betty Hill of New Hampshire were a couple who claimed to have been abducted by extraterrestrials in 1961, um, somewhere around between September 19th, September 20th, uh, while they were under hypnosis, the couple described the aliens as little gray men with oversized heads and large eyes. Um, that's a fascinating case, too. Um, I want to say that was one of the first abduction cases reported. Um, it was a very interesting case. Um, they went to their, I believe they, you know, they went to their deathbed saying that that's what happened to them, that they were both very, very in tune with what, you know, what happened. And uh, mm. so they kind of corroborated each other. So. Uh, I don't know, but I'm I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Varana's Trigger Happy Invader. Uh, it was Varana's City Park in Russia on September 27, 1989. Two young boys were playing soccer when they came, claimed to have suddenly seen a red disc that had landed near them. An alien came out of the disc carrying a ray gun like device, which was pointed at one boy with a uh, which, according to sources, was named Dimitri. It made him disappear. The alien left, and the boy reappeared. They described the alien as a three-eyed creature who stood nine feet tall. Yeah, hmm. that'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that one. I think those boys were just trying to pull the wool over somebody. But you never know. Who knows? Who really knows? According to evolutionary biologist Simon Conway Morris, extraterrestrial beings would likely share similar characteristics to humans. Morris bases his theory on the phenomenon known as convergent evolution, which is the idea that different species will independently develop similar characteristics because they live in a similar environment. Um, Anil Seth is a public science communicator and neuroscientist at the University of Sussex. Seth says that since human evolution depended on many unique and unpredictable factors, it is nearly impossible that an alien species would have human-like features. Seth says uh, it is more likely that aliens would look as different as the octopus. Just like humans, the octopus has a high level of intelligence and a central decentralized nervous system. However, they look nothing like humans nor do they share similar characteristics such as two arms or two hands for making tools. Well, I mean, you got to you got to think about that one. Octopus and man aren't necessarily in the same environment. It's That's a yeah, kind I mean, of different ball game with that, but I mean, I see yeah. where they're coming from. Yeah, I mean, octopus is in the water primarily. If it's not, it's usually not good, but yeah. <laughs> um so it says um Gravity likely plays a role in determining the size and shape of an alien life, which makes sense too, you know. We've got the force of gravity on us, but to me, you would think an alien would be bigger, not smaller. Well, that's if the gravity's lower, then the, there's not as much gravity pushing down on their spine. Right. 
Um, if so they have a spine. Right. All spineless. Kind of spineless yeah. aliens. Vertebrate with exoskeletons. He tried to abduct me, but he couldn't stand up. He just kept falling over. He couldn't hunch over. <laughs> he just <laughs> walked around. I just laughed at him, and then he disappeared. <laughs> Uh, the following information is based on an episode on the Science Channel's Through the Wormhole series, as well as an article on Popular Mechanics. Um, what would aliens actually look like? It says, this one is Life Under 1G. I guess that's 1G. One gravity? It says, yeah. Um, all life you find on planet Earth has evolved under 1G. Um, however, the following are speculations on what would life look like under gravity that is weaker or stronger than Earth. Life under gravity weaker than Earth. Uh, macroorganisms that live under gravity half of Earth's would likely be vertical and thin. To function properly, it would make sense that advanced life would have two arms and two legs or multiple right um life under gravity five times stronger than earth macroorganisms living under gravity five times stronger than earth would likely be horizontal and thicker in order to hold up their weight huh. yep. be pretty hard to live under five times gravity for humans yeah. We'd be pressed I'm against the floor fat. all the time. I'm living under 5Gs. Yeah, I don't know if we'd be able to actually move. I'm not... Yeah. We'd be just squished to the ground. The blob. You'd be the blob. Yeah. You'd just roll around. Basically. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's opinion on the most likely <gasps> character. You, huh? you butchered his name. <laughs> it's Neil, Neil deGrasse. It's just Neil deGrasse Tyson. Well. He's, he's cool. Yeah, I know. I know, I butchered it. So, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'm sorry. I butchered your name. Um, uh, opinion on the most likely alien character depicted in sci-fi films. According to the astrophysicist, uh, the idea of the creature from the Blob film is not so far-fetched. During a panel discussion that took place at Howard University on the poetry of science, Tyson said that alien depictions in pop culture are typically Anthropomorphized. Yeah, I'm going to butcher that one too. <laughs> Anthropomorphized. You yeah. said it basically right. Thanks. I'm glad. Thanks. Human. Human like. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for confirming that for me. Mm -hmm. He mentions how it is selfish to think that aliens would resemble humans. Tyson believes that the most plausible type of alien character ever to be depicted in science fiction films was the creature in the sci fi classic The Blob. Uh, based on the theory that gravity plays a significant role in determining what aliens look like, characteristics of a being on a 5G planet would likely share characteristics of the blob. What did I just say? What did I just say? Mm-hmm. Just like Oprah said. Uh, while there has yet to be a shred of evidence that any form of alien life actually exists, including simple life forms, Perhaps one day, scientists will develop the technology that is capable of finding it. Of course, it is possible that there is no life outside of our Earth. However, with billions of galaxies, stars, and exoplanets in the observable universe alone, there is an excellent chance that something is out there. If any type of alien life is ever found, their proven existence would easily be recognized as the biggest discovery of all time. Well... That's funny because wasn't it just what's the guy's name Robert Bigelow? Who is the owner of uh is Bigelow Aerospace. Um he does a lot of work for NASA. Um he's done a lot of investigation into the UFO realm and um phenomena and he was interviewed on 60 Minutes. Um, he, his company right now is doing a lot of, they're focusing a lot on human, uh, space flight and habitation. Um, you know, living in, in, um, I want to say they're using like these bubble things. Um, but you know, he, he's 
in the aerospace industry and like i said he has contracts and stuff with nasa does a lot of work with nasa so um she interviewed him on 60 minutes and she asked him directly says uh this, the reporter's name is laura logan um says do you believe in aliens and his response was um i'm absolutely convinced that that's all there is to it and she says do you also believe that ufos have come to earth he says there has been and is an existing presence an et presence and i've spent millions and millions i've probably spent more as an individual than anybody else in the united states has ever spent on this subject um it is risky for you to, Laura Rogan says, it is risky for you to say in public that you believe in UFOs and aliens, or is it risky? He says, I don't give a damn. I don't care. She says, you don't worry that some people will say, did you hear that guy? He sounds like he's crazy. He says, I don't care. She says, why not? And he says, it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality of what I know. She's got a point. You know, and then she says, um, "Did you, do you imagine that in our space travels that we will encounter other forms of intelligent life?" And his response is, "You don't have to go anywhere." She says, "You can find it here." He says, "Yes," or "Yeah," and she says, "Where exactly?" He says, "It's just like right under people's noses." Says. So Kind of interesting. Uh, I've been meaning to mention that for a couple weeks now. This next one is cryptozoology news. Also, um, it says two people spot Thunderbird in California. A uh, man in Sacramento County on Friday said he saw an unidentified winged creature. Um, 74-year-old DR told cryptozoology news he was driving on State Route 16 near Rancho Merida. Mor Marietta, Marietta, I don't know. Uh, when the incident took place the night of July 15th, it was around 11.45 p.m., said the piano technician. I was driving home from a performance in Fiddletown near Plymouth, he added. The Californian claims that he was driving at around 65 miles an hour when the huge bird showed up. It swooped down from my left and leveled off in front of my vehicle and flew along in front of me about 20 to 30 feet in front of me. I instinctively hit the brakes when this object appeared in front of our car, he explained. He didn't specify who the other person in the vehicle was. Um, the man described the creature as a 30 foot, uh, as having a 30 foot wingspan. Um, it was a black bird with features similar to those of a hawk. The wingspan covered the width of the two lane highway. Its wings seemed to undulate because of its huge size the animal he said continued to fly at around 10 feet off the highway and then lifted off the right and out of sight um i'm not sure how to accurately describe it the sighting took uh, reportedly took five to seven seconds um thunderbird also known as rock i have never heard that roc uh, is the nomenclature used by the Native Americans to refer to bird-like creatures with reptile features that are believed to be related to the extinct pterosaurs. So that's interesting. I always like to hear those kind of sightings because they're, um, man, it would just be wild to see something like that. Um, this next one is from Phantoms and Monsters. Um... I don't know if I'm going to read that one. This one's pretty long. Wow. Uh, let's read it. It's a Bigfoot encounter. Uh, chased by Bigfoot on Brown Mountain. Um, this comes from 2013. It says, author Robert Alley appeared on Bigfoot Tonight Show in 2013 and told of a frightening encounter a friend of his had at Brown Mountain, Alaska. A fellow firefighter who moved to Anchorage that was a friend and had a surprising encounter with his wife and his buddy and his buddy's wife on two quads. Um, they were on the ATVs and it was on Revilla Island, about 12 miles north of uh, Ketchikan. And it was the bottom of the Brown Mountain Road. 
and it was the scene of a pretty hair-raising encounter with what really seems to have been an irate Sasquatch, which reportedly chased these two couples who were four-wheeling down Brown Mountain in August two years ago. Uh, that would have been August 2011, and I'll just call him Curtis. He's a personable 27-year-old Ketchigan outdoorsman. Um, he's moved up Anchorage now, and he worked the worked here in retail and did emt and firework firefighting um in his off hours and he was able to give these details which i corroborated with the other witnesses um in curtis's words basically i'll just read my recording the the evening of august 26 2011 i was with my girlfriend and another couple on two four-wheelers we were having an evening ride on the brown mountain road to the top of the clear cut that's 3,000, that's up near maybe 1,500 feet. We had parked our trucks around 8 p.m. at the paint paintball gravel quarry halfway along the road. That's still closer to sea level, some miles away, and we rode our four-wheelers to Harriet Hunt Lake and all around the area before going up the Brown Mountain Road sometime around 11 p.m up to the top of the mountain for a while then back down it wasn't raining and we had moonlight so we just kept riding until 11 45 and then turned around to come back down my friends were ahead of us and we were just trying to see how far down the road we could we could coast in neutral my girlfriend and i who is who is my girlfriend and i who is his wife now just past the campsite by the bridge and creek near the bottom of the road but i thought uh when i thought i heard footsteps running down the road behind us and then my girlfriend looked around and said something's chasing us i kicked the quad into gear and accelerated to over 40 miles per hour but i could hear that it was still following us it was fast that's for sure well he continued it was just near the bottom of the road where the brown mountain road meets the white river road what I'm, uh, that I made a quick decision to slow down a bit to be able to make the turn and touch the brake slightly and take a quick look behind us in the brake light to see what I could. Um, it was only about 20 feet or so behind us, and I was kind of shocked that the thing was as tall as it was. It was not a bear, 7 foot t feet tall, heavily built. Here, uh, here my machine does 60 at the top, and I pegged it. After the corner, he said, I passed my friend on his machine. His machine does 70, and we raced the seven minutes back to the quarry to load up and leave quick, you know. I just, at that, at this point, I just want to add with Tanner, the friend, uh, he had no idea at this point what was going on, only that Curtis and his fiance or his girlfriend were tearing past him. On the way, I could hear our girlfriend's voices over the engines urging us to go faster. I pulled up just 10 seconds behind him. Tanner weighs 260, and he was lifting his 300-pound machine onto the open bed of his truck by himself. As soon as I pulled up, he was helping me. Well, while we were loading my four-wheeler onto the truck, our girlfriends had taken my small tactical flashlight, um, and they'd been shining it back down the road where we come and all around, and he said, I believe they were both talking about what we'd seen chasing us and i heard the word bigfoot as they shone the light i noticed three surprising things first uh there was a big black bear in the paintball part of the quarry the local paintball club uses it about 35 yards away and there was another this quite remote this is quite remote and there was another less smaller bear less than 20 yards away these are both black bears coming slowly out of the bush on our side of the road. Um, that would have been close to a valley drop-off that goes down 500 feet at the edge of the drop-off to the valley in the east. Um, at that moment, I was still trying to strap my quad onto the truck bed, and Tanner and our girlfriends were standing right beside me. They were scanning the beam back and forth when I heard some kind of gravel noise down the road, and the girl screamed. I looked in the direction of the beam and I was really shocked to see a tall, heavy shaped standing in the middle of the road about 40 yards back the way we had come from. 
um, it was right on the road in front of a big waterfall area. It was exactly the size and shape of the thing that had been cha had chased us down the Brown Mountain Road. About seven feet tall, but um, it would have had to have been running 40 to 45 miles an hour to have got to where we were loading. I measured it out myself later, you know, 3.5 miles. It was really uh, all, it all matched well, the data confirmed it when the light hit, it, it dropped to a football player stance. It was kind of bobbing up and down with one hand on the road, the other on its knee. Um, at the time, the smaller black bear behind us that had just come out of the bush turned around and took off back into the bush over the edge. Um, I want to get out of here like I want to get out of here. Um, everything was happening all at once as the girls turned for the truck I could see the beam hit the big bear in the paintball area and it was going crazy knocking barrels over and crashing into things trying to get away from us or the big flipping thing so Curtis summed it up he said the girls jumped in the trucks and they were yelling at us to get in both Tanner and I started to drive off and almost the same second Tanner had to stop for 10 seconds to throw his ramps in the back and I looked back to see the thing, but there wasn't enough light. And I was focusing on getting out of there. We didn't stop at all. On the way back, my girlfriend and I talked about it. We both agreed that it had to have been a Bigfoot we saw. Uh, we talked with Tanner and his girlfriend back in Ketchikan, and they agreed. That was it. He told me, I'll be back there for deer hunting, and I'll be carrying a camera, he said. What happened to us may sound amazing, but those are the straight facts as best as I can describe them. Well, that's crazy. <clears throat> so, yeah, I wouldn't go back there deer hunting. Because <laughs> uh, he's probably aggravated about his deer. So, let's see what else. All right. Um, the last, well, I have another thing here, and this is just, I'm not going to go into the whole article, but thought it was interesting is a creepy clown motel is apparently for sale um it's a motel in the middle of nowhere dedicated to clowns and all creepy glory the aptly named clown motel is located in tonopah nevada population 2478 and has a reputation as the scariest motel in america uh, maybe it's because of the rooms featuring clown dolls dangling over the bed. Just the perfect vision for when you wake in the middle of the night in a strange motel room. Uh, the, clue, the rooms in Clown Motel are dirt cheap, less than $50 a night. But the real price you'll pay comes when you check into your room and see a clown doll looming over you. Some visitors have been so creeped out by that vision of loveliness that they've covered the clowns with towels to avoid nightmares. Uh, that's yeah. They got some pictures, and it's just creepy. Who would want to stay in a place like that? <laughs> All right, so that's that. Um, I have one other thing I was gonna talk about. Um, I think I already talked about one of them. Um, I something popped up earlier on uh, my Facebook feed, and I'm gonna have to post it to our Facebook group group, and probably to Instagram and stuff. But it's about, um, let me see if I can find it. I can't remember where it was at, um, who it was. Um, but it, it, there's, somebody found uh, this little bipedal creature. Um, and they had it on, uh, I'm going to have to look back at it. It was in Russia, in uh, Uzbekistan or something like that. And it's like a... I don't. I can't say it looks like a Bigfoot, but it's got like a human-like face, and it's just covered with a mop of hair, like dark black, dark brown or black hair, all over its body. And when you first see the video, it's just laying there on its back, and you see its eyes moving and stuff. And I don't know the, the movement of the eyes and stuff. It doesn't look robotic to me. It looks you know legit. Um, and then the, he's got this little hand, and the guy's holding its hand and, like, rubbing his hand. Um, and it has, like, human-like hand, but it's it's kind of a little slimmer, maybe, like, between a human and a monkey hand or something. But um, And then at one point it switches over, and the thing is up, like, sitting, the, like, the can't, the, 
camera fan the uh, pans away to the left or something and then when it comes back the little thing is like sitting over against the wall and it moves around a couple times you see it walking and it just it's got a weird gait to it doesn't i wouldn't i don't know i it's weird you should, I, i'll post it on facebook and i'll post it on a link to it on instagram and twitter um it, it's creepy i don't know um it looks like when it walks it walks with its feet like flayed out to the side you know like what do you call that not pigeon toe but like a penguin walk kind of duck feet um very interesting so i don't know um you said you had something for us buddy nope all right well i guess we're gonna get into this um actually after last week's episode um i did some more digging and i actually got a tip from uh richard who we interviewed a couple of weeks ago um and so i did some more digging and i got a book on the majestic 12 and watched a couple more documentaries and uh specifically there was um he had told me about one that came on it was ancient ancient aliens that i guess it it mustn't just come out a couple days probably the day we recorded or something i'm not sure um but it was episode, season 12, episode 9, I believe it was. Um, so the latest, I think it might have been the latest episode. Anyways, they talked just about the Majestic 12. So between that and the book um, and some other information I was reading, I just wanted to go through some more of that. Um, because a lot of last week we talked about the Majestic 12 leading up from Roswell and... Um, the Kenneth Arnold sightings and the other sightings that happen around the U.S. So, um, so there was in 1985, um, you had the the first roll of film got developed and it had um, some documentation about the Majestic 12, and then like 10 years later, um, I mean not 10 years later, a few months later. The beginning of 1985, the um, the other information was passed along. Uh, the postcard they got sent to Bill Moore, the the UF investigator, um, with you know basically directions to go to the uh, archives in Washington D.C. and look in this box 189. And there was another document. Um, so fast forward to March 1994. Um, a second roll of film uh, was sent to a UFO group in Maryland. Um, it came from a pharmacy in Wisconsin is where it was mailed. Um, in, in that roll of film was more um, pictures, you know, of documentation, um, just like the other roll of film. And this one contained... What was something called the Majestic 12 Group Special Operations Manual? Um, it was labeled Restricted Psalm 1 01 Extraterrestrial Entities and Technology Recovery and Disposable Disposal. Um, and it was listed as Top Secret Magic Eyes Only. Um, in that document, there was a couple things that I wanted to you know bring up here and talk about. Um, yeah, and nobody knows if any of this is true. This could be, like, just a huge hoax. It seems odd that it spread over 10 years, you know. But you never know. People people are... There's lots of wacko people out there, and they might just be... Yeah, this might be government disinformation in itself, this, you know. But they are interesting, and it lets your mind wonder what you know, could be up, and if they are legit, uh, what could this mean? Or, it, you know, could be just uh the government messing with the ufo community so um but anyways in the documents um one interesting there's, there's a ton of interesting stuff but um one of the things is it, it defines in that document that the highest level or the highest top secret security clearance in the u.s is called magic um and I think it's actually called Magic Eyes Only, um, which is 
all these documents have that listed on them. But supposedly that was the, the security clearance given to Majestic 12. Um, so they, they all, the members of Majestic 12, had the highest security clearance in the U.S. So basically, yeah, sounds like nothing was off limits. Um, another interesting thing is this manual has the date of April 1954 on it as being, you know, when it was published. Um, and it has an official seal on the document, on the cover page, uh, for the war office. Um, and from research that was done, um, it appears that that seal was legitimate for that time period. You know, I think they changed it like in 19, in the sixties sometime that seal changed, um, design. But at that point in 1954, what's on this document is legitimate is what, what would be expected, uh, for anything with that kind of seal on it. Um, also, there were, there's some, you know, as with all this, there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of people that are trying to um, discount it and say, you know, it's bogus. And one of their arguments is um, that there's printing flaws in it that, you know, wouldn't be there. Um, and there's one specific one in this document with uh, this like z that shows up offset um on one of the pages so it's sitting a little higher than all the other um all the other text and in the research um someone contacted uh the the government printing office and actually spoke with someone who worked in the government printing office during that time period <clears throat> and they said that they knew exactly how those documents were would have been printed what piece of machinery because they were well known for the z getting i guess because maybe the z didn't get used as often um so it collected dust and when it would print it would strike higher than the rest of them i guess um so i thought that was that was interesting you know it's pretty you know kind of some confirmation there um uh, another interesting thing is in the documents it talks about the different types of ufos um i believe they don't call them ufos though they call them ufobs um so that's you know kind of interesting it's they add the b there and supposedly that is you know legitimate that um initially you know any documentation that uh the government in a lot of a lot of uh instances were referred to them as ufobs um so anyways there's these different types of um, UFOs are sketched out. They have uh, the disc shape, which is you know kind of the standard shape, the disc or platter shape. Um, it shows sketches of the sphere or uh, like a cylinder shape, which a lot of people have reported seeing. And one I just I just recently heard about. I'd never really uh, I heard it in an interview on another podcast, and um, they talked about the ice cream cone. And um, <clears throat> I didn't realize that these were seen, you know, fairly frequently also. And they're referenced in this documentation also, as well as uh, just a standard, you know, triangle shape, which, um, you know, many people have seen. I mean, really, all these shapes are standards that a lot of people have seen. And um, so, that, you know, that was interesting. Um there's also uh, a letter that uh, came was an order that came from Eisenhower, um, who in 1947 was chief of staff for the Army. Um, he had directed General Twining um, to New Mexico um, to white signs, specifically to uh, evaluate or inspect uh, the UFOs being kept there or... Um, and and we talked about that um, last week about General Twining. You know, around the time that Roswell, uh, the rancher, contacted or the Army went out there from uh, Roswell Army Airfield, the the investigators went there to the ranch where the crash site was at from that Army Airfield base, 
and they collected some stuff. Well, on that day, there was an order given to General Twining to fly from Wrights Field in Ohio to um, Alamogordo, where, you know, and, and to do, and he was there from July 7th of 1947 to July 11th. Um, well, this apparently was the order where Eisenhower told him to go do that. Um, and it says that Twining had res- reported back um, that the the UFO or vehicle, UFO B, whatever, that he had evaluated um, or, you know, investigated and that they found it had what they believed to be an atomic engine. So it was a compartment that had what they believed to be an atomic engine in it. Um, and it says here that this was examined by Oppen, Dr. Oppenheimer, and he believed that that's what it was. It was an atomic engine. Well, Oppenheimer is interesting because he is a scientist from the Manhattan Project. So he's one of the lead guys there. So, yeah, who else better to figure out what an atomic engine would look like than the guy that helped design and create the atom bomb? Um, so I thought those were, you know, very interesting points about the, the document and um, and just, you know, more about the Majestic 12. But I kind of wanted to go through, just read some stuff. Some of the headers, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about um, <clears throat> what it says. But like on the front page, it says, uh, Warning, this is a top secret Majestic Eyes only document containing compartmentalized Information essential to the national security of the United States. Eyes only access to the material herein is strictly limited to personnel possessing magic 12 clearance level. Um, examination or use by unauthorized personnel is strictly forbidden or punishable by federal law. Um, of course, you know, nobody knows if these are real, but it talks, um, it's broken down in the chapters and, um, you know, it, it says, uh, like the first chapter is just, you know, it's just an introduction. And it goes through, though, it talks about this, the the EBEs and the description of them, which are the extraterrestrial biological entities. <clears throat> it gives a description of uh, the, the extraterrestrial technology. Uh, it talks about what to do if you're, you know, basically if there's an incident that happens... <clears throat> about blocking the press not letting it get out um securing the area what to do how to control the situation um it talks about uh removing the technology and transport so you know if you have a you know i guess a ufo crash how to handle that um how to clean the area um it talks about you know circumstances you may run into patch packaging um and pack packing the the items um it talks about what you do after you get it to wherever it's going and how to unpack it and how to you do what to do with living organisms so if you have the ebes that are living or if they're non-living how to handle them um it tells you how to uh identify the uobs uh ufobs um so it's very interesting, you know, that <clears throat> if this is legit, I mean, this, this is probably one of the most fascinating documents. And like I said, it's, what, 50, 60 pages, something like that. Um, I just, you know, browse through some of the highlights there. But, you know, the whole Majestic 12 is just, it's an amazing thing. If it's legitimate and it's true, um, I don't think uh, outside of, um, you know, actually going on national TV or something and showing, you know, a, a, an alien with the president or something. I don't, you know, I, I don't think there's, we've seen much that, you know, that matches up to a document like this. If it's, if it's actually the legitimate, um, outside of a, you know, actual, you know, alien, being displayed or brought out on display or something but yeah i'm still up in the air about the whole ufo thing but it's very interesting it's something you know to 
it's an unknown. I mean, you know, I put it right in in line with cryptids that you you just you don't know. There's so many people that <clears throat> witness these things that you feel that some of it there's got to be some legitimate legitimacy to to you know a good part of the story. Not everybody can be making this stuff up. And um, but to you know to what what degree is it? You know, I thought about, I was listening to a podcast earlier talking about abductions, and I'm like, you know, alien abductions. Like, well, you know, what if there's technology that the government is using to do these abductions on people? I mean, it's sick to think, but you never know. I mean, they, you have black budgets in the government that can be doing stuff that, you know, the, the rest of the government don't even know about. Um yeah, you know, I don't know. It's uh, it's a fascinating subject, but um, I just thought we would uh, you know, not make it short and sweet tonight, not get too much into it. But I just wanted to add that after I found that I was like, I can't just let that go <clears throat> after last week's episode. So, so you got anything to add there, buddy? Not too much. I think you summed it up. But I, I came to kind of a conclusion. You were talking about them bagging the alien, or like not bagging, but you know how to deal with it if it was still alive. Right. That that kind of prompted me to a question. If you know, if if we found a live alien and the government got to it and the press didn't know about it, it'd probably never see the light of day. But if the press did get to it and make a big stink about it, the government may, you know, I don't know. But to think, uh, you know, if it's intelligent and it can speak with us and it wants peace, should should aliens be given human rights? Yeah, well, you no. Know, should they should they be given free roam, or should should we have to spectate them and see what they're doing at all times, or would yeah, they be kept in a, a, a you know an enclosure or like what? Yeah, could it be no? trusted? You know? Yeah. I mean, you can't. Crazy. You have that issue with humans you know that we live on this planet with every day yeah what are you going to do if you have some entity that comes from another place and yeah i don't i that's a good question i mean i think like you said if something if something was found at roswell or any other crash site um and the U.S. had it in a possession, you would, like you said, you would never see it. Um, and there's been people that have said that, yeah, they, they, they've, they've gotten aliens and they have them and they're studying them. They live in, you know, different bases. Um, and not necessarily, everybody talks about Area 51 and uh, there's other bases besides Area 51 that are keeping, you know, secret stuff. Um, I and I, you know, uh, there's been I've heard stories of people claiming to have seen these aliens out in, you know, out like at these bases. They saw them out walking around. You know, they weren't supposed to, but they were like in a in a far off area. You know, and but they witnessed them. But I I don't know if that's who knows if that's legitimate and. Would they do that? Why would somebody? Why would they do that if they were studying this entity? I don't. I don't know. There's a lot of speculation. It, it goes right in with Bigfoot, and you know you have people that say Bigfoot cloaks and they go through portals and all this, and they say the same thing about aliens. Um, I don't. I don't know about aliens. Um, I I'm kind of there for a long time. I believe that. Um, and I'm still not convinced, you know, 100% sure, but I thought that they're probably just, like, coming from the demon realm. You know, they're just trying to sway people's thoughts and their their views on things, and they mask themselves with this. But then I think, why would it come as an alien? Um, why not something else, you know? Um, <laughs> lawyers. Yeah, lawyers. Um... And, you know, Bigfoot, yeah, same thing. They all, it, it all kind of meshes together. You have people that you feel sincere about, and then you have other people you just think they're wackers with the, you know, cloaking and 
all that stuff. And I, I believe, you know, the, as with everything, there might be some level of truth to it. Um, but a, more from a biological sense, like, you know, with, with UFO, I mean, uh, with Bigfoot, Sasquatch, that, you know, they, they have some kind of camouflage technique that, you know, like the octopus or whatever that can change and the chameleon. I don't think it's, you know, nothing like fantastical, like they're manipulating light intentionally, like with their mind powers or nothing. I think more of it's from, you know, a biological mechanism of some sort. Uh, anyways, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent because we're talking about UFOs and drop right back into Bigfoot. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, of course, I don't know because, but it's interesting subject and uh, the whole Majestic 12 is just fascinating. I mean, it's just, I could see how people like, you know, Stan, Stan Friedman and, um, people that investigate Majestic 12, how they get really focused on that because it's, the documents are fascinating. But then just as many people that believe those documents are real, you have it, at least equal number of people that say they're not, you know, they're false. But, and, you know, I stated all that last week. There's people that that claim that the dates, the way they worded the date and didn't do a military date, didn't do this. Who knows? I mean, people make mistakes. People change things. I know from like a, a a company standpoint, the companies I've worked for in my history, nothing is that uniform. Not even in the government. So, it, there's there's always room for errors and flaws and things to be different from what you would expect them to be. So, um. Anyway, says I think that's that's all I got tonight. Do you have anything you want to add? Mm -mm. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap this thing up, put a bow on it. Um, as usual, uh, as we stated at the beginning of the show, um, if you have a um, comment or a story to share or an encounter, you can hit us up on unexplained.reality at yahoo.com. That's our email. Uh, we'd be glad to talk to you. Love to hear from you. Anything you, know, you want to say, you want to talk about, it's all good. Um, we're very open. You know, we have, might share opinions on here, but we're very open about this stuff. We because nobody knows. Nobody. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody knows. And if if you've had an experience, we've had experiences with weird stuff that we can't explain. Um, so you know. Don't feel ashamed about that because uh, you're not alone. Um, you hit us on Instagram, Twitter. Come follow us, like us, all that good stuff. Um, Facebook, find our group, the Unexplained Reality group. Um, come join us. Um, YouTube, we have a YouTube channel. All that stuff is in the, the description for tonight's show. Um, Patreon and... PayPal. Um, our PayPal accounts unexplained.reality at yahoo.com If anybody has a dollar they'd like to throw our way for hosting fees, that would be great. Um, let's see. It seems like there was something else I was going to talk about. Maybe not. So, <laughs> uh, we'd like to thank uh, as usual uh, Ricky Young Music uh, rickyyoung.com uh, our favorite podcasts, Sasquatch Chronicles, Into the Fray Radio, Monsters Among Us, um, The Grayland Report, Mysterious Universe, The Confessionals, Somewhere in the Skies. Is that it? I think it's OK Talk. I think that's it. OK Talk, Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Yeah. yeah. And there's another one that's just started coming back. I've, I've listened to it before, but they've just started picking back up where they're doing regular episodes, and that's the cryptid factor. So if you like a really kind of crazy, fun show that's not so serious, awesome show. Those guys are really, really funny. It cracked me up. Um, so that's another good one. But anyways, I think that is going to be it for tonight. Unless you want to have some one last word in, buddy. Mm -mm. You good? 
Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to be out of here and uh, we'll be back next week with something new to talk about. Okay. All right. We'll see you later. All Bye. right. Bye. Bye. Prepare to confiscate the human's possessions. Possessions secured. Prepare the probe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a hot second. No need for a probe, man. Why are you doing this anyway? To learn from your account. And to obtain your container of treasures. Container of treasures? Oh, you mean my cryptid crate? Yes, the cryptid crate you possess. We desire it. We have discovered it to be populated with many objects we find most incredible. Correct. The objects in this container cannot be produced on our home planet. Well, you don't have to abduct people to get your own cryptid crate. Elaborate. Just go to cryptidcrate.com and sign up. On the first of each month, a new box filled with amazing cryptozoology-themed items will come to your mailbox, or spaceship. Allow us to show appreciation to you, human, for this invaluable information. Yeah, sure thing. Does this mean you're going to take me back to Earth? <laughs> Not exactly. Where I'm sitting